I'm Sammy and welcome to Story Study Saturday. This is the series where I take the stories that I have been reading and look at them from a writer's perspective to see what I can learn from them and what I can share with you that I've learned from them. This week I'm actually going to be talking about a book that I did not particularly like. Not because it's poorly written or anything like that, but because it's a little out of my realm. And that's actually why I chose to read it, was because it was out of my realm. I read the Mistborn trilogy. I read the first of the two trilogies, and I'm going to stick with just that. The reason that I decided to actually read the Mistborn series is because I'm writing a little bit out of my comfort zone on the book that I'm working on right now. I am writing a fantasy, magic, sci-fi-esque book, and I I didn't really read very many of those growing up or now. I never really spent a lot of time reading books with magic in them. I've watched a lot of shows with magic in them, but I just never really went for books like that. I'm trying to understand the genre more and develop a magic system. So the reason that I picked up Mistborn was because Hello Future Me did a video on what makes a magic system, and I will link that up here. He covers a whole bunch of examples, and I knew some of them, but I did not know Mistborn, which apparently is a classic among fantasy readers and people who like books with magic systems in it. So I figured it would be a good place for me to start doing some research. So I chose to read it to learn about its magic system more than anything. So I have to point out that I did not personally read the book. I mean, I read it. Like, I... I consumed the whole story myself, but I didn't read it with my eyes to the words on the page. I listened to the audiobook, which is not not reading, but I don't consider the way that I listen to the audiobook reading. So you know how the classic audiobook is like one person reading, typically maybe two, if they have two different perspectives. Sometimes they'll do that cool thing where they've got two actors or audiobook readers reading it. The one that I found was by Graphic Audio. It's super great really really great. They have like a whole cast of actors, they do a audio design so that you can feel like you're watching a, their slogan is a movie in your mind. So they do everything besides give you the visuals and it's so great to consume media that way. It was like literally the best way I could have read this book because I tried a regular audiobook, I tried reading it myself, and I just could not follow. And that I don't know if that's a me thing or if it's the genre not meshing together with me or if it's a writing thing. So I'm going to look at it as a writing thing and then feel like in my heart it's a me thing. So we'll talk about my general thoughts. I'm not really going to give away any spoilers here because the book's been out forever, for one, and I don't really have much to say that requires spoilers. I'm only going to talk about the first book rather than the whole series because I had the same problems with the other two books as well. So I'm just going to talk about the first book here. Going into this reading as a research project more than like a enjoyable book that I was just reading for fun, this is very much so like it feels like a classic. It is also a really great example of a magic system. Everything is really clearly defined and it all works out in a certain way and you can understand how it works without really knowing how it works and you don't have very many questions about how it works. It's really interesting to look at the magic in and of itself. I also think that there is a clear setup in the first book for character development. You start off and you see these characters and you see all of their flaws. That's how they're introduced to you. They're introduced as your first impressions, their strongest personality traits, and they are just that. And that is what you think of them, which gives plenty of space for growth and for the reader to grow to love these characters and the characters to grow into different, stronger, smarter, more empathetic people. And I think that's really great to set up your characters in a way that you can watch them grow. And then you do get to watch them grow. And I'm not being very specific at all, so I don't have to give away any spoilers, but you do get that pleasure of characters developing. I also thought he did a very good job of balancing the different characters' perspectives of trust and love, and then the concept of safety and of being 
being alone. And the differences between the two main characters' perspectives that we follow, their takes on it are very interesting to look at the differences and then watch them grow into learning the truth. And given that we have these two main characters that we're following that from their perspective, we get to juxtapose them a lot and they are so well juxtaposed. They are greatly made to be similar and totally different. And we get to see how their similarities emphasize different points of their differences and how their differences change their perspectives when they're interacting with each other and how all of those things just sort of meld together in the way that juxtaposition wants you to meld. I love seeing main characters' perspectives that we see being drastically different and having them find their middle ground where they meet together and what their drawing factor is to each other. And it's just really great to witness that and see these characters develop into a team together. Given that I feel like this story is a classic among fantasy, I think that it's got a really great example of world building. And in a way that I don't really know where anything is, and I'm fine with that because I don't really need to know where anything is, where I think the world building that's a little bit harder to comprehend is where you need the map in the, the beginning of the book to know like what the plot is and how the characters relate to each other and their distance and where that is and how that is. An example being A Court of Thorns and Roses. You need the map and I never look at the map because I never want to. I never read fantasy books with the world building but there were times where they would reference like the continent and like this general vicinity and I did not know where that was in reference to the characters. So I'm thinking you're probably on a continent. Are you on an island? Are we on an island? I don't want to have to know what the world looks like. I just want to understand that the characters are traveling distances and that the distances are relevant to them in this way and that this is the central area and we understand that it's the central area because it's displayed as being the central area. The way that Mistborn succeeded in making me not really care about what the world looked like. I don't need to know what the shapes are. <laughs> I don't. If I'm confused about distances and like what the relevancy is, I don't think it's the best world building. So I think that this book did a very good job of developing that world and doing it in a way that doesn't stunt the momentum. Like I didn't need any backstory to understand where the characters were in the moment, but we got it in a way that didn't slow us down. Whenever we were in Vin's perspective and we got a look into her history, it was always related to what she was doing in that moment. And I think that's the best way to give that backstory is to put it into the moment. Don't tell me about everything that happened in the history of the world before your character arrives in blatant exposition. I don't care then. But if you do it in a way that relates to who the character is, what the character is doing in that moment, I will care and I will retain it and I will know how that relates to your world that we are currently interacting with because I'm seeing it through that character. That's how you get people to pay attention. I mean, I, that's how you get me to pay attention. That's how you can get a large portion of people to pay attention. Some people really love the world building aspect, but for it to be more universal, connecting with the people who don't care about the world building and who care about the people is a lot faster of a way to get people to care about your world building. So some things that I think could be improved from a general writing perspective, not from my, I didn't really like the genre of the book or the way the book was written because that's not my thing, more so from a recognizing that this is a good book in and of itself, what would I make slightly better? I would probably start with making sure that the characters in their dialogue sound drastically different in a way that allows you to really recognize who they are. I didn't have that ability. Like I would hear a line of dialogue out of context. I wouldn't know who it was most of the time. With the exclusion of Kelsier, I pretty much knew when it was Kelsier because I feel like he had the most flamboyant way of talking, but all of the other side characters, I didn't really differentiate until I had the audiobook that had all of the different actors. I don't think your book should need 10 different actors to be able to tell the story and and keep track of who's talking. I think your characters should be able to do that themselves because people talk differently. Even if you're from the same family or the same area and you have the same slang, everybody sort of uses their words in different patterns. Even though we all speak the 
same language or have the same accent or whatever. Everybody talks different and I think all of your characters should be different enough that you can have dialogue, 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 dialogue without any dialogue tags and know who's saying what at what point during that conversation. I didn't have that until I got the audiobook so I would definitely work on differentiating those characters with their voices a lot. It also kind of bothered me that when you first pick up the book, you really know what the message is going to be at the end. You know what you're supposed to learn from the beginning just by how drastically away from it Vin is from our first time meeting her. You know what you're going to learn and you know what she's going to learn you just don't know how. And I think that that kind of takes away from the experience of the message that you know what it's gonna be if you just read a little bit deeper into the context. I would like it a little bit more if the message wasn't so blatantly opposed at the beginning. Give me a little bit in the middle so that we can build out one way and then drastically change the perspective the other way. I don't wanna see the exact opposite of the good version at the beginning. And for the thing that drove me absolutely bananas while reading and listening, why did the perspective change so often? Like we're in third person, but we're in the third person that looks through one single character's perspective, but it also switches between Vin and Kelsier's perspectives. And until I got the hang of whose perspective was what, which was about like a third through the book. It was so complicated because it wasn't like we changed during a chapter break. We would just change in the middle of the chapter. Why? Why couldn't, why? I just didn't understand that. If there was some consistency or some like distinction between the characters aside from the slight change in perspective of the narrator's voice, I don't want to have to like work to know where I'm at when the narration is happening. I don't want to have to force myself to figure out whose eyes I'm looking through or whose shoulder I'm looking over, which is more so what that third person perspective is. I don't, I don't, I didn't, I didn't want to work that hard. I would definitely avoid just randomly switching perspectives like that because it was very jarring in the beginning. And then, I mean, towards the end, I was listening to an audiobook, so I didn't notice it as much. But on the page, it was like, who's talking? Where are we? Why are, who, what is going on? That really bothered me a lot, actually. So the things that I think we can take away from this is read it if you're developing a magic system and you want a hard magic system. It's a very good example of a hard magic system and I highly recommend it for that purpose. A lot of people are big fans of this magic system because it is so clear and so easy to understand and so I beloved it because it is a classic fantasy novel. The world building is done in a way that does not take away from the momentum of the story and really drives it through a first person perspective which makes it easier to relate to as a reader than it does through exposition from other stories in the fantasy realm. Make sure that your world building is coming from a needed perspective, not a I came up with this world and these politics and these things. So because I, I came up with it, the readers need to know about it. They don't need to know about it. It'll help you a lot. You should make sure you know everything about the world that you are building. Your reader doesn't need to know. Keep it on a need to know basis. Make sure to distinct your side characters' voices. Really develop them each as well as you can. And make sure that all of them are as different and as important to the story as your main character, but you're just looking at it from your main character's perspective. We're just following your main character's story as closely as we are, but your side characters should be just as important. They should all have their own agency, their own unique personality, and their own unique voice. And we should be able to know who is who. That's incredibly important. And I think a lot of people look over their side characters and just sort of make them tools to help the main character. And if you're gonna change perspectives, let your readers know just let them know. But I, overall, I think it was a very good book to learn from. I just did not enjoy reading it. And I highly recommend the graphic audio version of the audiobook because it is very easy to follow if you want to learn about the magic system like I did. And I can link that playlist too. That is all of my thoughts on the Mistborn series, what we can learn from it as writers and as 
fantasy writers or just storytellers in general. I will see you on Tuesday if you hit that subscribe button for another writing tip Tuesday and again next Saturday for another story study. If you have a book that you want me to look at from my perspective as a writer, please leave me a comment down below. I love book recommendations. I love reading books without knowing what they're about. It really like makes me super happy to just sort of jump into a plot knowing nothing more than the title and the genre. So feel free to leave a comment and I will probably take that book and add it to my reading list. I will see you guys on Tuesday.